There are many big, scary words in the health industry. Words that can make people feel overwhelmed and neglect that part of their health because they feel like they'll never understand it. It just sounds so complex and overwhelming that you can't help but feel helpless. One such word is creonine. Everyone seems to stay away from it, and no one really delves into what it is and why you need to pay attention to it. Hello and welcome back to our channel. Welcome to Wellness. And today we'll be simplifying everything you need to know about creonine and how to manage it. And don't worry, it's not that complicated at all. We'll be going over what it is, why you may need to manage it, and how to do so. So if that sounds like something you'd like to know more about, stay tuned. Before we get down to it, if you like these kind of videos where we make complicated pieces of health information simplified and easily digestible, make sure to subscribe to our channel as we release new health-related content on a regular basis. With that being said, let's put our learning hats on and see exactly what you need to know about creonine. What is creonine? So what exactly is creonine? It's actually pretty simple. So simple, in fact, that it can be explained in just one word. Trash. Creonine is simply trash. It's a waste product that our body produces throughout the day. When you move around during the day, your muscles get used and they constantly break down and build themselves back up. Through that process, there's a lot of creonine breakdown and in the end, you're left with healthier muscles and some waste, which is creonine. This waste then gets released into the blood and that's why on your regular blood test, you can always see creonine in one of those categories. Now, if you know anything at all about creonine, you probably heard that it's related to the kidneys and not the muscles. And you wouldn't be wrong. That's because while muscles are what produce creonine, the kidneys are the ones responsible for getting that waste out of your body. Usually, this process happens on its own and is not a problem. But if your creonine levels are too high, it usually indicates an issue with the kidneys and then it becomes a problem. Just imagine your body carrying all this waste and not being able to get it out, and then it only adds even more waste to it. At some point, it's bound to become a problem for your body. High levels of creonine usually indicate or lead to kidney failure, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and more. That's why, while you rarely have to pay attention to it, if you see higher levels than usual of creonine in your system, immediately link it to one of these, most commonly the kidneys. The normal levels of creonine in the body are from 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. Anything lower or higher is usually some kind of abnormality. Of course, the body is so complex that there are always exceptions to the rule. For example, it can be too high because of dehydration or too much protein or creatine intake, but the reason is still that it makes it harder for the kidneys to work properly. On the other hand, it's often lower than usual in vegetarians and vegans, where protein intake isn't enough. This is fairly common, and a few diet tweaks can usually solve the problem if that's the cause. So let's see what the seven best ways to lower creatine levels are and how to execute them. Number one, don't take creatine supplements. This may seem a bit obvious, but a lot of the people that have higher levels of creatine are usually athletes who take supplements to enhance their performance. This is usually not a bad thing. With a lot of physical activity, these supplements later get absorbed by the body, and it isn't a problem. But as we already established, creatine is created when creatine breaks down. And consuming more creatine means that there's going to be more waste in the body. People who are on creatine supplements are often told to drink lots of water to balance it out, but in cases of high creatine levels, it's best to stop the supplements for a while. If you are completely healthy, these supplements can only boost your performance, but if you have any kind of kidney disease or issue, creatine supplements are a huge no, not just from us, but from doctors too. Number two, reduce protein intake. Going along with the first point, another way to make sure that less waste is being produced in your body is to lower your protein intake. This tip uses the same logic as the first one. Protein is a huge factor in muscle building and maintenance. That's why you always hear every gym guy talk about protein, protein, and more protein. Well, again, that's great if you're healthy. If you have kidney problems, protein can give your kidneys a bit of a hard time. Red meat specifically can raise creatine levels by quite a bit. This is because, throughout the cooking process, the heat of the pan or oven breaks down the creatine within the meat itself. That way it turns into creonine and it's like you're consuming even more waste. That way you get creonine from both inside of your body and from outside sources, and it becomes a bit too much at some point. A good way to still have a good protein intake if you're an athlete and reduce the creonine levels at the same time is to get some plant-based sources of protein into your diet. Some of these foods can include lentils, tempeh, edamame, nutritional yeast, spirulina, and different tofus. Just a few diet tweaks for a little while and you'll be set saving yourself a bunch of trouble in the future. Number three, water. 
Now, this tip isn't to drink more water. This tip is to talk to your healthcare specialist about how much water to drink. While, yes, dehydration sometimes plays a part in raising creatinine levels, simply drinking more water isn't always the solution. It's easy to come to the conclusion that drinking more water means going to the bathroom more, which means more waste gets out of your body. And while this isn't entirely wrong, the thing is that water is a tricky subject, and when it comes to kidney issues, too much can also become a problem. And that's why you need to see your doctor, and they'll give you a plan for how much water, as well as other liquids to drink, at what time during the day to drink them, and ultimately how to maximize your kidney's health through tweaking your daily liquid intake. Number 4. Eat More Fiber There have been a bunch of studies that have tested the positive effects on the body after increasing fiber intake. That being said, there is still room for research on this topic. Even so, some studies have shown a significant decrease in creatinine levels in people with chronic kidney disease after only increasing their levels of fiber intake. The best and safest way to increase your fiber intake is to eat foods that are rich in fiber. These could be a lots of fruits, such as pears, strawberries, apples, raspberries, and so on. Avocados are also pretty rich in fiber themselves. Also, many vegetables like carrots, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts are also fiber rich. Other foods can be beets, artichoke, kidney beans, peas, chickpeas, and more. And last but not least, lentils. Lentils are also fiber-rich, but they're also protein-rich, and you can eat them without suffering the side effects of getting too much creatine from an outside source. So you can keep your muscles big while slowly but surely getting rid of the excess waste in your body. Pretty cool if you ask me. Number 5. Reduce the salt. A big part of kidney problems, even if they're not related to higher levels of creatine, comes from too much salt intake. Most people think that not putting salt on your regular home-cooked dinner at home fixes this, and they've reduced their salt intake. However, most excess salt in the body never comes from the pure salt that you put on your food. The problem here is processed foods. Processed foods like chips and crackers, or even fast foods like McDonald's or KFC, are often loaded with a bunch of salt, even if you can't tell by the taste alone. In fact, they're so jam-packed with sodium and phosphorus that has been reported to cause renal issues. Instead, try focusing on whole food diets, and then even if you add some salt, it won't be a problem. Number 6. Stop Smoking There's a reason all the cigarette boxes in the world have a text at the bottom that lists the different negative effects smoking has on the body. It's all true. Even so, people still continue to smoke without any thought for the future. While smoking isn't directly linked to higher creatinine levels, it can cause major issues to the body, one of which is chronic kidney disease, and that can definitely be linked with higher creatinine levels. We talked about how creatinine is just a waste that the body is trying to get rid of. Well, smoke is the same way, so why add more waste to your body by inhaling it from somewhere else? It doesn't make much sense, especially if you're on the road to being a healthy and happy human being. But everyone has a head on their shoulders, right? Number 7. Limit Alcohol and last but not least, the last tip is to limit alcohol intake. The thing with alcohol is that it's really tricky. A lot of studies say that a glass of wine could be really healthy, while other studies show that alcohol is a major cause of inflammation in the body. When it comes to creatinine levels in the health of your kidneys, it's no different. Some studies have shown that moderate consumption of alcohol, mostly wine and beer, can be a great help in preventing chronic kidney disease. Other studies show that a little bit too much alcohol can lead to some major issues for the kidneys as well as for the nerves and blood pressure. The key here is in balance. No one's saying don't ever drink, but we are saying to keep it moderate. So just like with water, if you're going to be drinking alcohol, you need to talk to your healthcare specialist to figure out how much alcohol is safe for you and when you can drink it. And that's it for what creatine is and the 7 ways to lower your creatine levels. Did you find this video helpful? If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel as that way other people will get to see it as well. Also, comment down below if you know any other tips for lowering creatine levels. This channel is a health community for everyone, so all opinions are welcome. With that said, it's time we take our leave. So as always, have a great day, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.